welcome back. I'm here once again at the lathe. Now as I had hinted in the last video, Cutting Curves, uh, I really wanted to take a look at uh, alternative ways of cutting, that is ways of cutting for instance with a gouge by not, not necessarily cutting on the tip of the gouge. Um, and as I explained then, uh, a lot of times you simply can't get the tool uh, in the right place to do it that way. However, uh, most of the examples I came up with for that video uh, somehow or another involved cutting against the grain, uh, which is something we haven't really covered yet. Now you're probably already familiar with this concept of cutting with or against the grain because usually it's the second thing uh, taught in wood turning right after rubbing the bevel. And so what I'm talking about here is the, for instance, the idea that uh, you cut, when you're cutting on the outside surface and spindle work, you cut from the outside, the outermost larger diameter, to the smaller diameter, or as often as it's taught, cutting downhill. And of course, whether you cut from larger diameter to smaller diameter, or smaller to larger, will depend on whether you're cutting an outside versus an inside surface, and whether you're cutting spindle grain, uh, spindle work or uh, face work. Now empirically, I've always known this to be correct, that if you cut in the wrong direction, that you'll get uh, tear out. But I've never been satisfied with the explanations of why that happens. Uh, usually the, ex the explanations have all uh, something to do with the way, the direction that the, the tool is moving. Uh, however, it doesn't explain certain situations, for instance, when you're doing a peeling cut with a skew, um, either doing shallow beads or shallow coves, uh, you can cut perfectly fine uphill with no noticeable difference in the quality of the cut. Um, as well, if you're scraping end grain with a, with a scraper, for instance, uh, it really doesn't matter which direction the tool is moving, that the finish on the wood will be approximately the same. But I have a theory that uh, it has a lot more to do with cutting angle than it has to do with the direction that the tool is moving. Now what happens whenever, whenever a wood fiber, uh, as it spins around, um, and it comes in contact with a cutting edge, that cutting edge is going to exert pressure against that fiber. And so the fiber, only one or two, th something has to give, and one or two things is going to happen. So either the, f the cutting edge is going to cut cleanly across the fiber, and the fiber is going to stay intact, or at some point the pressure is going to become too much uh, for the fiber, and the fiber is going to get ripped away. So it's almost as if the cutting edge at that point is becoming a plow and tearing the fiber out. And exactly, that's exactly where tear out comes from. Now, when we're cutting side grain in spindle work uh, with a wide cutting angle, my cutting angle is parallel to the wood fiber, and there's always going to be another fiber just behind it. And that fiber is going to do uh, a lot for us. That's going to support the fiber being cut so that it doesn't get torn out. That explains why uh, when we're doing planing cuts, uh, even when we're doing um, shallow beads and coves, we can go in either direction because we're always using a, a, a wide cutting angle and the pressure uh, on, the, on, the, on the fiber being cut is always being supported by the fiber behind. Even if you start to cut at a little bit of an angle, that fiber just behind the one being cut is still supporting it. Uh, it also explains why when we're cutting uh, end grain uh, with a, uh, with a uh, scraper, uh, we can go either direction as well because once again we have a really wide cutting angle and the fiber being cut is always going to be supported by the fiber just above it. Now where things get interesting, start to get interesting, is when we use something other than a wide cutting angle. When we start to use say 45 degrees, now we have this uh, pressure being exerted on the fiber but instead of having all the pressure, whereas when we had a wide cutting angle, all, when the fiber is moving towards the cutting edge, uh, the pressure was exactly in the opposite direction. Now, if we have an angled cut, have a more of an angle, what happens is that pressure, uh, that fiber, pressure being exerted on the fiber, some of it's going to go back this way, but some of it's going to be diverted sideways. And that's where things start to get interesting. Uh, because, although when we're still doing side grain, that doesn't cause a problem because now some of the fiber, some of the pressure simply uh, being exerted along the length of the fiber being cut and that's fully supported so that's there's no problem uh, no problem there um, but what gets interesting is as we start to cut into end grain uh, because then what happens 
is that not only are we putting pressure on the fiber behind the one we're cutting, uh, now we're starting to put pressure on the fiber below the one we're cutting uh, because, of that, because of that lateral pressure being diverted. Now as long as the one below it is longer, there's still not a problem because this fiber is still fully supported. The problem happens when you start to go the opposite direction. If I start to cut this way, now I have this fiber being cut and I have a shorter one underneath it and so it's not being fully supported. So this fiber can actually tear out. And it's very easy to see empirically uh, that that's the case. So here I'm going to be cutting at 45 degree angle going from a larger diameter to a smaller diameter because I'm on spindle work. Um, and my fibers are, are like about, uh, are situated like this. So as that pressure uh, is exerted on the fiber below it, because that one's longer, I'm not going to get any tear out. So we have a nice, clean, tear-out free surface. Now in this case, since we're going to be cutting in the opposite direction, we're going to be cutting a longer fiber uh, before cutting the shorter one behind it. So the end of this fiber right here is not supported and in, some, in some, many cases it's going to tear out. can see we got quite a bit of tear out. So when we're cutting side grain, when we're cutting uh, uh, in spindle work on the outside surface, we want to cut from the larger diameter to the smaller diameter so that we're cutting the shorter fiber first. Um, if it helps you to think of in terms of uphill and downhill, we always want to cut downhill uh, when we're cutting on an outside surface um, in spindle work. Now what happens when we start talking about the inside surface uh, ho so basically hollowing end grain in uh, spindle work, the fibers are reversed. So now we actually don't want to cut from the larger diameter to the smaller one because now we're cutting the long fiber first and unsupported by the one behind it. Instead, we want to cut from small diameter to the large diameter, but you can see that kind of poses a problem because I can't get the tool inside uh, to cut from center to out, um, and I'll, we'll look at a couple of ways to dealing with a lot of a lot of turns. We'll just resort to a scraper. Um, there are other ways to do it, but it's a whole topic in itself. Usually, it's a whole chapter in a book dedicated to that. And I like to. I'm hoping to do a, video, a whole video just on how the different ways you can deal with um, cutting end grain uh, in spindle work. But for now, um, just understand that the grain is reversed, so we really want to cut from from the inside out when we're cutting on the inside of spindle work. In face work, since the fibers are running perpendicular to the lathe bed, everything gets swapped. So because my uh, fibers on my larger diameter on the outside surface are longer, um, I actually have to start from the inside, the smaller diameter, to the larger diameter. That way, I'm cutting the shorter fibers first and then the longer fibers. Now, with face work on the inside surface, just like in spindle work, it's the opposite of the outside surface. So whereas in face work, the outside surface, we go from smaller diameter to larger diameter. On the inside surface in face work, we go from the larger diameter to the smaller diameter. Um, and that's, again, so that we're cutting the shorter fibers before we're cutting the large, longer fibers. Now that's actually a fortunate thing because you can imagine how difficult it would be to hollow bowls if you couldn't start from the outside edge here and work towards the center. Now it can be a little bit tricky to remember this at first, uh, but just remember that um, when you go from an outside surface to the inside surface on the same kind of work, it's always going to be the opposite. So in spindle work, on the outside surface we go from larger diameter to smaller diameter, and when we're working on the inside surfaces of spindle work, uh, we're going from smaller diameters to larger diameters. And then when you go to face work, 
everything's the other way around. So when we're doing outside surfaces and face work, we're starting with smaller diameters, going to larger diameters, and when we're start doing the inside surface, for instance, uh, bowl hollowing, uh, we're going from the larger diameters to the smaller diameters. Now, although we always want to cut with the grain when we can, um, there's going to be many situations where we don't have any choice uh, or it might be preferable to actually cut uh, against the grain given other factors. For example, the bowl I did uh, for the last President's Challenges, technically I should be cutting from the smaller diameter to larger diameter because this is an outside surface and face work. Same with this wing. But there's no way I can get a tool in there. So I had to actually cut uh, against the grain both on the outside of the bowl and on this side of the wing as well. And it's easy to point out many other examples. For instance, uh, if you ever have doing some kind of spindle work where you're not using tail stock support, um, it's always better to cut towards the headstock, and that might mean cutting uphill or cutting from smaller diameters to larger diameters, at least to remove uh, bulk material. As well, if you're trying to hollow end grain and spindle work, uh, unless you're going straight to us, if you use anything other than a scraper, at some point you're going to have to uh, cut against the grain, at least uh, to remove some of the initial material. Another common case is with natural edge bowls, uh, because if you're cutting the normal direction, cutting with the grain uh, from smaller diameter to larger diameter, uh, there's a chance that there's going to put pressure, extra pressure on the bark and it might dislodge the bark from your natural edge bowl. So very often we'll turn around and cut in the wrong direction uh, in order to try to increase our odds of keeping the bark on. Now the good news is, uh, when cutting against the grain, tear out is not necessarily inevitable. It's gonna, there's a lot of things we can do to stack the odds in our favor uh, for those times when we actually have no choice but to cut against, the, uh, cut, ag cut against the grain. But first, let me bang up the surface again so we have something to compare to. So here, here we have our typical service of cutting against the grain. Now there's quite a few things we can do to stack the odds in our favor when we're trying to cut against the grain. Um, first of all, speed helps. A um, uh, little extra speed uh, always improves uh, when, you're, when you're talking about bevel roving cuts. Now, as long as you're within your comfort zone, um, I think the old adage goes, if you turn up the speed and it makes you go, hmm, you're probably okay. If you turn up the speed and you go, holy stromboli, that's probably too fast. Um, the other thing you can do is you can make sure your tool is really sharp. So you can go back to the grinder and get a fresh, fresh edge. Because the sharper your cutting edge is, um, the more likely that the fiber is going to yield uh, and not tear out. Um, the other thing uh, is that we can take a light cut. The more material we're trying to remove, um, the more pressure there's going to be on the fibers, so the more likely it's going to tear out. Um, and also, since we are, in effect, still cutting against, uh, running across end grain, we want to keep a really steep cutting angle, just as if we were cutting directly across end grain. That's going to help a lot. It's, all, it's also going to uh, lower the pressure on the fibers, and it's going to tend to slice the fibers cleanly uh, before they get a chance to tear out. And finally, you'll find that it depends a lot on the species. I tried several, I had to go through several species to even find something that was good for demonstrating this. Um, because uh, certain species, harder species tend to be more prone to it, so maple works well. But I also find uh, relatively softer stuff like uh, black walnut, um, I couldn't even get it to tear out that much uh, when cutting against the grain as opposed to something like poplar or pine or in this case the mahogany is about in the middle of the road. It, it, you can get good results um, if you're careful uh, but uh, you will still get tear out uh, when, if, you're, if you're not trying to get a better cut. So here we go. We've got a little extra speed and I've gone back to the grinder and uh, got a fresh edge in my gouge and I'm going to take a very light cut and I'm going to keep my cutting angle nice and steep and the other thing I hadn't mentioned is it also helps to slow down try not to hurry the cut because you give the cutting edge more time to get through the, the fiber uh, and not uh, be more like a plow and shove right through it <laughs> 
and let's take a look. Not too shabby. And of course, if it's not quite satisfactory just yet, you can always go back and try taking an even lighter cut. And that surface looks almost as good as if we went with the grain. It took us a lot more work to get there, but if that's your only option, then that's your only option. All right, that's what I have for you this time. Uh, so go forth and cut with the grain or against the grain if you have to. Uh, hopefully, if you get into a situation where you have to cut against the grain, uh, this will help you uh, successfully cut it without uh, having that tear out. So um, until next time, I'm Brian Havens, and thanks for watching.